This is actually a topic that I've had on the back burner for quite some time, ever since I started this channel, in fact. But the one reason why I've never actually made a video is because this tends to be a very contentious topic. So many people seem to get genuinely upset if you disagree with them, and I really don't know how to address that, especially since my view takes an entirely different tack than that of most others. See... I don't argue for free will or against free will. I find the whole debate to be totally pointless. In virtually all cases, at least in my experience, I find that these debates aren't so much debates. They are people talking right past each other rather than at each other. I also think that they aren't so much debating this subject. They're debating the implications of the subject and the other philosophical ideas almost all based on emotion that may arise depending on the answers that we find here. And that's really one of the major problems that I have. Rational people do not argue that way. You do not adopt a belief that the speed of light is X because if the speed of light were Y, it would make you uncomfortable and make some of your pre-existing beliefs untrue. The speed of light is what the speed of light is, regardless of what said discovery would do to your pre-existing belief structure. But both sides of the debate are really operating on emotion, not fact. The religious, for example, desperately want there to be free will because without it, the whole idea of sin and atonement, that just goes right out the window. If you have no choice in your actions, then sin becomes a meaningless concept, as does the need for a savior. If you cannot be responsible for your decisions, then you cannot be held accountable for them either. On the other side, you have people who oppose the idea of there being a God and therefore argue that it's irrelevant. You also have people who think that personal responsibility is in general a bad thing and try to argue for an ultimate lack of choices. These are not people arguing on the genuine merits of the individual arguments. These are people with an agenda, and agendas always get in the way. Also, as I said, I think a lot of these people are just arguing past each other. They don't seem to have a commonly agreed upon definition of what free will is. They're not really talking to each other. They're talking around each other. They're often talking at entirely dissimilar levels of complexity and scale. Yes, it may be very much the case that if we understood the motions of every single quark at the moment of the Big Bang to the nth degree of perfection, we may be able to accurately predict absolutely everything that ever happens in the universe until the end of time. But so what? You and I don't live our lives on a quantum scale. We do not experience the universe on a quantum scale. So why should what happens there affect our day-to-day -day existence? Sure, science should try to learn what we can about the world around us, but that knowledge doesn't necessarily impact how we behave day-to-day. -day. Yes, there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our and every other active galaxy out there, and that means exactly what to what I do today. It has absolutely zero impact on my life, no matter how true it might be. The same goes for perfect knowledge of quantum effects. It means nothing to me. Even if some godlike entity can gaze into their crystal ball and perfectly track every particle since the beginning of time and somehow know exactly what I will do every second of every day for the rest of my life with perfect clarity, that means exactly what to me. Even if I'm a walking, talking robot, I still have to live in the real world as a walking, talking robot. We're not going to stop holding people accountable for their actions. We're still going to have laws and social mores and acceptable behavior standards that we hold people accountable to. Nothing is going to change, even if we had that information, which we don't and may never actually achieve. Every day when I wake up, I get to decide what to have for breakfast from among a list of possible choices. If I have five possible choices, I can choose any of them. I'm not being overtly controlled by the universe. It isn't telling me that I'm going to have cornflakes. And damn it, I'm going to like it. If I go to Baskin Robbins, I have 51 flavors of ice cream to choose from. I am not restricted on any conscious level to picking the one flavor of ice cream that I'm supposed to pick because it's been predetermined since the moment the universe came into existence. What difference does it make to me, the individual, what happens on the quantum level? It doesn't feel any different regardless of what may ultimately be true. That's why the whole question really is stupid. It has absolutely no application to our day-to-day -day reality. 
the world we live in has free will, even if it is just the illusion of free will. It certainly feels real enough. You freely chose to click on this video. You freely chose to watch it. Does it really matter if, at some quantum level, you are actually predestined to do so from the beginning of time? Does it change the actions that you are taking today? Does knowing what actions you are programmed to take for the rest of your life change any of those actions? No, by definition. So what difference does it make? Why waste time debating over it? Even if we found out that we have no free will and we're all just robots, how does that change anything? Even if we had that magical and mystical knowledge of what everyone was going to do in the future, it isn't like we can change our reactions to it. Even if we found the next Hitler, their actions are going to be their actions, and our response is going to be our response. So who cares? There's really nothing we can do about it anyhow. Why waste our time in meaningless debate that doesn't actually accomplish a thing, no matter how it comes out? Don't we have better things to do? That probably won't make anyone happy, at least those who take the debate seriously, but there you go. It's like the solipsism argument, where you get impassioned people on both sides, but ultimately, it's irrelevant. What if you're in the Matrix? Well, you still have to deal with being there, you still have to live as though it is the real world, and therefore, that makes it indistinguishable from the real world. Net gain zero. You have a piece of esoteric information that ultimately gives you nothing. Big deal. There are enough battles to fight in this world without fighting the ones where winning just puts you further behind. I pass. Thanks. But thanks for sticking with me. I hope that you learned something. Intelligent comments are welcome below. And of course, like, share, and subscribe. If you have any other subjects that you want to know my opinions on, as Gorilla Gorilla did, please let me know. I just might make a video of your topic. So until next time, farewell.